Hello, I'm Dick, and here's Dodo. And this morning, as you can see, we're not in our garden. You wouldn't find all these beautiful, strange plants in an English garden. And although the long, hot summer's over, and it's autumn now, you won't be as blooming hot as we are in here, because we've come to the Cotswold Wildlife Park, and we're in the tropical house. So don't expect to see old Frank the Rabbit coming lolloping out of this greenery. It's a good job he can't, because down here in this pool are two creatures who wouldn't half fancy him for breakfast. They're called Albert and Fiona. That's the smaller one over there. And they're Mississippi alligators. All the animals we're going to see this morning are reptiles, cold-blooded creatures that don't have hair or fur or wool or feathers, but scaly skins. And it's the skins that at one time made alligators quite rare. You wouldn't think it to look at those hard, knobbly creatures, but those skins, when they're properly treated, make beautifully marked soft leather for handbags and things like that. And thousands and thousands of alligators were killed for their skins. But now I'm glad to say they're protected by law. And I'm glad to say that Dodo and I are protected from them. Well, the next lot of reptiles we're going to see wouldn't hurt a fly though they might hurt a lettuce. Come on. What do you think of that then, Dodo? Ordinary old tortoise, isn't it? What do you think of this? This is a giant tortoise from a chain of islands in the Indian Ocean called Aldabra. I know I said that reptiles had scaly skins. Sometimes it's a bit more than that, isn't it? Knock, knock. Who's there? Tortoise. Tortoise what? Tortoise a lesson. In the wild, you can tell the age of tortoises from their shells. The proper name for it is a carapace. This fellow's quite young, only about 20. They, they live as long as 150 years. And this particular carapace is a very interesting one, too. Because as you can see, it's got all sorts of raised points all over it. And they think that, that may be because when it was young, it was fed on the wrong food. Too much fruit, perhaps. You see, on Aldabra, they'd only have grass to eat. So now, they only feed them green stuff like lettuces. And now the young ones growing up have quite flat carapaces, like that one over there. And then there's a whole other lot of giant tortoises that live in the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific. And their carapaces are very interesting because it depends which island they live on. If they live on an island that's got a lot of tall growing plants, so that they have to stretch their necks up to browse from them, over thousands and thousands of years, the front part of the carapace has developed a sort of rolled back collar so that they can stretch right up. But the ones that live on islands that are mostly grass, they just have an ordinary end to their carapaces like these ones do. Well, if people ask you if you believe in giants, you'll be able to say yes, won't you? Now, the next reptile we're going to see really does have a scaly skin, and an awful lot of it, too. And he might just fancy Dodo for breakfast. So, Dodo, you stay here with these nice, quiet giants. This is Eric. He's a snake. As you can see. And by the way, don't get the idea that snakes are slimy. They're not. They're beautifully warm and dry. But he's not a poisonous snake. He's a constrictor, which is a kind of snake that coils itself around its prey and squashes it to death and then swallows it whole. Eric is a Burmese python. He's quite small, actually. He's only 10 foot long. The females are twice as much as that. Now, constrictors have an extraordinary mechanism in their jaws where they can open their mouths tremendously wide to swallow their prey whole. A really big one could probably swallow a goat. And even Eric could manage Dodo if she was here without any trouble at all. But I don't think he's going to eat me. He's much too nice. Come on, Eric. All right, Eric. But they wouldn't let me in with this big reticulated python in here. He's 17 foot long, and it takes three men to handle him. 
and they chuck a sack over his head before they go in there too. They're so strong, these big ones. Break your arm, bend your wrist right over backwards, anything. Eric is fed on rabbits and chickens, dead ones. But his feeding times are a bit different from yours, I expect. In the summer, one meal a week. In the spring and the autumn, one meal a fortnight. And for two or three of the winter months, he doesn't get any food at all. That's how it would be in the wild. If you offered it to him, he wouldn't accept it. I don't think he's hungry now. I'm going to take him back to his keeper, and we'll see how Dodo's getting on. Hello, Dodo. How'd you get on? A bit boring, was it? Didn't have much to say to her, I expect. Well, it's time to say goodbye from Dodo and me and the Giants. See you again next week. Yup. Yup. Goodbye. Yup. <laughs>